More than two months have passed since the North Korea U.S. summit in Hanoi ended without a deal, and not much progress has been made in denuclearizing the Hermit Kingdom. While South Korea's role as a mediator has become more important than ever before, top U.S. negotiator North Korea Stephen Began is due to visit Seoul next Tuesday. Today, we go in depth on the analysis of the current situation surrounding Korea and future perspectives on nuclear negotiations. For that, Dr. Kum Young. Hyun of Asan Institute for Policy Studies now joins us. Thank you for coming in today. Thanks for having me. While dialogue remains halted between North Korea and the U.S. Mm -hmm. following the No Deal Hanoi summit, South Korean Foreign Minister's remarks are making headlines today. She mm -hmm. said that North Korea needs a comprehensive roadmap of denuclearization mm -hmm. to strike a deal with the U.S., while also calling on both Pyongyang and Washington mm -hmm. to be more flexible. Mm -hmm. How do you interpret her remarks? Well, there are some interpretations that uh, Minister Kang's remarks is actually saying that uh, North Korea should uh, actually uh, get closer to the U.S. position about doing a so-called big one, big comprehensive nuclear deal uh, with North Korea, and but uh, which means that the North Korea should uh, actually disclose all the like, nuclear materials in one time and then uh, have the sanctions removed later. But I think uh, I beg to differ in this regard. I think uh, Minister Kang, what, what she said about broadening the scope in this case, uh, she was trying to convey this message to North Korea that North Korea should also invest in relation with South Korea. Right now, North Korea and South Korea uh, have a, I mean, I mean, the South Korean President Moon tried to, uh, I mean, increase the role of South Korea as an intermediary between Pyongyang and Washington, but North Korea has been, I mean, quite critical about that. So I think Minister Kang is saying that essentially that Pyongyang should pay attention to the intercultural relations at the same time as Pyongyang is trying to somehow restart the negotiation in Washington. Mm. So it was an indirect call on North Korea to invest more on its relations with South Korea as well. That's how I would, I would I take mm. it. Yeah. Now, can we, can we think of Minister Kang's statements as the South Korean government's official stance? It reflects probably the South Korean government's uh, thinking about this issue, especially uh, the feeling about the fact that uh, the inter-Korean dialogue is actually stuck as well. So I think probably it's a reflection of that. Top U.S. negotiator for North Korea, Stephen Began, will mm. visit Seoul next week to hold working level mm. talks with his Korean counterparts. What are some of the expected agenda? Well, the, the origin of the working level talks uh, was about how to coordinate the position of uh, both countries, the United States and South Korea, regarding the, the way to approach North Korea in terms of engagement, I mean, such as like, uh, how to provide uh, humanitarian and economic assistance. So I think uh, the agenda for this working level meeting will also reflect uh, some of those uh, agenda items. And I think in this case, uh, I mean, in, in addition to talking about uh, the, uh, the status of the ongoing impasse of negotiation between Washington and Pyongyang, I think Steve Began is going to talk about, uh, about how to, uh, say, like, uh, provide uh, some economic or humanitarian assistance to North Korea. As you've mentioned, and as many mm. reports suggest, the humanitarian aid to mm. North Korea will likely be brought up. But South Korea's plan to provide an aid worth mm. some $8 million was suspended in mm. 2017. And South Korea's unification ministry on Thursday mm. also said that they are not considering any food aid to North Korea at the moment. Then why is this issue of humanitarian aid being surfaced now? Well, this is, uh, this, um, I would say, like a reflection of the some of the concerns presented by the international community, especially the United Nations, uh, the agencies that uh, work, I mean, that operate in, inside North Korea, such as the World Food Program and, uh, the, food, and the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO. And they've been publishing reports since March, actually, indicating that uh, North Korea's, uh, this year's North Korea's harvest level would, uh, would be pretty low compared to the years past. I mean, we know that uh, agricultural production in North Korea has been pretty meager in the last decade or so, but then even compared to that standard, uh, this, this year's production will be even lower. I mean, some expect that the shortfall will be in the, in the magnitude of 1.5 million tons of grain. So I think, uh, uh, I mean, even though North Korea hasn't really indicated that they are in need of a massive humanitarian aid, I think the international community, including the United States, are preparing for uh, you know, possible contingency, food contingency in North Korea. 
If humanitarian aid goes through this time, mm. how would North Korea react? Would this help in any way for the resumption of the nuclear negotiations? Well, there's a reason why North Koreans uh, didn't take the $8 million that South Korea put on the table in, back in 2017. Mm. Uh, North Korea, also, we know from the interaction between South Korea and North Korea that North Koreans wanted from South Korea not aid, but investments. So clearly, in terms of policy priority in uh, North Korea, humanitarian assistance is not a it's not a priority for them. I mean, regardless of what's going on on the ground in terms of agricultural production. So I don't think the North Koreans are going to say this is um, something needed at the moment from their point of view. So we are again talking across each other, I would say. Hmm. The nuclear standoff between Pyongyang and Washington continues. North Korea's Vice Foreign Minister Choi Son Hee mm. has renewed. Uh, the warning to the U.S. that mm. U.S. has until the end of this year mm. to make a bold decision, while U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo uh, continues to reiterate that complete denuclearization is the only way to resolve the nuclear deadlock. So how long before we see some progress in this nuclear deadlock? Well, uh, we know that uh, Kim Jong-un has essentially made it clear that uh, he'll be waiting until the end of the year uh, to see whether the United States changes attitude towards Pyongyang. So basically that's it. That means that North Korea will wait until the end of the year. There's no hurry on the Washington side either. Uh, I think uh, the generalized feeling in Washington right now is that the time is on the American side. Uh, there's very strong sanctions in, in place against North Korea. So North Koreans are probably running out of money and resources. So you know, longer than the American side waits, uh, they're probably expecting that North Koreans are going to provide better offers uh, for denuclearization. So clearly there's no hurry on, on the side of the United States. And also North Korea said that, that they'll wait until the end of the year. So I expect nothing will happen until the end of the year, therefore. So yeah, that's how we we'll, like, interpret this. Why is North Korea emphasizing its deadline of until the end of this year? Why did it fix mm. the time until the end of this year? And, and what is the regime aiming for? So the timing, I think it's quite interesting in my view. I mean, we know that the North Koreans are clearly suffering from the effect of the sanctions. That means that North Koreans are probably getting uh, closer to the economic brink, so to speak. And that means they are going to run out of a hard currency or like, you know, important key commodities such as oil and uh, food. So it looks like the North Koreans can wait until the end of the year before they you know, have to take uh, drastic measures to reverse this situation. So that could be one indication that the North Koreans can wait on year, uh, you know, like until the end of the year. Another indication is that the North Koreans are probably looking for a right political timing uh, to you know, send a message to Washington. And important timing in this case would be the electoral cycle in Washington. Uh, we know that uh, President Trump is facing an election in 2020. And he'll, be start, I mean, he'll have to start working on the uh, electoral campaign beginning early next year. So clearly North Koreans are gearing up for the occasion. And they probably understand that uh, you know, they can, I mean, North Koreans can challenge uh, Trump, President Trump's claim that uh, he's been very successful in North Korea, especially if North Korea launches a provocation at the end of the, this year or early next. So the timing was carefully calculated by North Korea. Japan is also an important regional mm. player. Unlike previously, Japan appears to be uh, more actively reaching mm. out to North Korea with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe during an interview saying that he's willing to meet with Kim Jong-un mm. without any conditions. While reports are also emerging that Japan's chief cabinet secretary Yoshihide Suga is pushing for a meeting with North mm. Korean officials in New York. Do you think that Kim Jong-un Abe summit can be materialized? Well, clearly there's a, it makes some strategic sense to both sides, uh, especially for North Korea. I mean, North Korea is right now is in this Orwin kind of like a, a tour of the world, uh, reaching out diplomatically to different countries. I mean, when he started with the, class, I mean, the traditional North Korean allies, such as China and Russia, uh, he just recently met with the President Putin of Russia. Uh, and then, so it's natural for North Korea to explore new options, new diplomatic uh, uh, breakout, uh, breaks. And then I think, I think uh, ja the Japanese Prime Minister Abe has been interested in opening a channel of communication with North Korea because there are two reasons for that. First reason is that uh, Japan as a regional player doesn't want to be uh, left out of this ongoing uh, debate or discussion with North Korea. That's there's one. And another one is that uh, Abe can, by starting a negotiation directly with North Korea, a dialogue, I would say, uh, you know, can actually uh, 
pro, uh, I mean, provoke uh, Seoul a little bit and uh, influence our South Korea's position towards Japan. We know that the, uh, the Korean-Japan relation at the moment is at the very bottom. And I think our Prime Minister Abe, by reaching out to Kim Jong-un directly, can somehow show, showcase this and uh, to Seoul that uh, Japan cannot be left out and ignored in the South Korean calculations. South Korea's concerns are growing on how to carry on its role as mm. a mediator. While North Korea is yet to respond mm. to President Moon's proposal on the fourth mm. round of inter-Korean summit, when do you think would be the best timing to hold the next inter-Korean summit? Well, the timing is, I mean, any moment is a good time to hold another summit, uh, inter-Korean summit. Uh, but then I think uh, the timing is really up to, you know, on the, on the hands of Pyongyang right now. I think, uh, I mean, we know that uh, South Korean, you know, President Moon has been expecting a uh, reciprocal visit by Kim Jong-un by the end of last year. That didn't materialize. And there's some hope that the Kim Jong-un might come to, not just not to Seoul, but they may have a meeting in Panmunjom to mark the anniversary of the Panmunjom Declaration uh, last month. But that didn't happen either. So clearly, uh, there's no hurry on the part of North Korea to have another inter-Korean summit, whereas we want another inter-Korean summit. So uh, we don't know uh, when the situation will change. But I think uh, North Korea has uh, described the conditions for another summit by saying that uh, in recent days that South Korea should step up and then be more independent of the American, uh, American position towards the negotiations and put more focus on the, the, the a collective good of the you know, Korean nation. So that means that uh, you know, as long as South Korea is close to Washington when it comes to denuclearization, uh, the prospect of another inter-Korean summit is probably far off. But do you think that would be possible for South Korea to be a little bit detached from U.S. demands and uh, be more responsive to North Korea's demands in order for the inter-Korean summit to occur? Well, uh, so, I mean, we, South Korea can be strategic about it. I mean, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to change its position or align, alignment of Washington wholesale overnight. Uh, you know, South Korea can actually be more, I mean, can communicate to Washington that the current impasse, diplomatic impasse between the North Korea and the United States is not, uh, it's actually, you know, it cannot really last. And therefore, South Korea is going to step up and, and propose a new idea for uh, dialogue. And so that's been lacking on the part of South Korea so far. It is not, I mean, South Korea has claimed that it wants to be the intermediary between, or like, you know, catalyst between Pyongyang and Washington, but hasn't, didn't really put on the table any concrete idea to do so. What kind of requests do you think will be made by Kim Jong-un if another round of inter-Korean summit takes place? Well, you know, North Korea has been very transparent about what they want from Seoul. I mean, they want uh, expansion of the inter-Korean economic exchanges. So case in point uh, would be in the restarting of the Kaesong industrial complex. If that's so difficult, then the South Korea could offer uh, restarting the Mount Kung and tourism. So these are very two concrete uh, requests that North Koreans have put on the table. And it wasn't really the North Koreans, South Koreans our, you know, themselves have put uh, forth that idea from you know, long ago. So I think that's probably the litmus test for North Koreans. Many experts believe Kim Jong-un is not ready yet on mm. how to proceed with denuclearization talks. And it's widely believed that he's still mulling his next step mm. after his summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Do you agree? I think North Koreans are very clear about what they want to do right now. I think, uh, I mean, Kim Jong-un has made it very clear that he wait. I mean, he's very, been very specific about the, the timeline. He wants, uh, he's going to wait until the end of the year uh, before, I mean, for the United States to change its position towards North Korea. And he's been hinting at, uh, about that since the beginning of this year with, with his New Year's speech. So, I mean, I think North Koreans have been putting a lot of our thoughts into this. So they have a game plan, clearly, and then we know what kind of game plan they have. And they've been hinting at it too, the so-called new way that they've been threatening with in, uh, if the, the ongoing negotiation with the United States collapses. That they are clearly hinting at uh, you know, restarting the provocations again. So I think they have a game plan already. All right, Dr. Goh, thank you so much for your analysis and perspectives. My pleasure. And that does it for this edition of News In Depth. From all of us here at Arirang, thank you for watching and have a great weekend.